This is one of a number of recordings of tutorials on how to use programming using an artificial intelligence language to produce thinky programs, programs that might be used to model some aspect of how people or possibly other animals think. This one is about numbers. It's about mappings between numbers and their verbal descriptions. And this file that I'm going to use to demonstrate the program is available online at this location. It is part of the Poplog system and the programming language is POP11, but POP11 has been extended with a language called POP Rulebase for building rule-based systems. And I'm using POP Rulebase in this demo. I'll explain and demonstrate some of the features of a rule-based system later on. So this is one of a number of tutorials on how the benefits of programming in computer science go beyond providing lots of useful, exciting, entertaining, practical applications and giving people jobs and helping to boost the national economy. Those are the features of computing that most people focus on when they think about education and why pro teaching programming is important. I think there is something else that's far more important in the long run. Acquiring and understanding in a deep way ways of designing, building and testing complex information processing systems can give us new ways of thinking about how natural information processing systems produced by biological evolution such as animal minds and human minds work. Now this is not just a vague hope or a vague idea, it is happening. There are books and articles and many research projects concerned with trying to understand what sort of information processing animal minds and human minds do. And because the people who are expecting to go into psychology, neuroscience, philosophy, linguistics and other subjects studying minds do not normally learn about programming at school, they are seriously handicapped when they go to university and start having to learn about how minds work. And the teachers are also handicapped because they, in many cases, grew up when it wasn't possible to learn about programming. So this is a tiny illustration of that link between programming and doing science as opposed to technology. One important aspect of human minds is their ability to learn about mathematics and how to make mathematical discoveries. That includes geometry, learning about shapes and um, many other things, but it also includes learning about numbers. This tutorial shows how to use a rule-based system to model some aspects of what humans learn. I shall be using POP Rulebase, which is an extension of the language POP11, which is a powerful language developed for teaching research in artificial intelligence. POP11 and its extension POP Rulebase are part of POPLOG. Poplog is described here. If you give to Google Poplog, Pop11 and Pop Rule Base, uh, you'll get a lot more information. Now what I have in my what I'm displaying is the Poplog editor VED, which is a text editor which enables me to create and uh, read and edit text files like the file I have here. But it also allows interaction with the Pop11 compiler. This file, which is a tutorial file, is a mixture of extended comments like the comment that is now scrolling up the screen and the table of contents. Those are all in comments. And there's also some code, which I shall point to later on. If I give the command enter, which puts the text editor cursor up there, I can then type L1, which means load one files. And that compiles this file, ignoring all the comments. And when I do that, it prints out some information about how to start the program. There are several different ways. I'll ignore the more complicated one and focus on the simpler one. So I'll use the editor command escape D to tell the editor to give that command to POP11 and uh, it will start the program. The program was compiled when I gave the L1 command. So this is a little interactive program which asks what if you like, uh, what I'd like you to do next. And if I type count, 
it says sorry I don't know any numbers so I can give it some numbers one is a number and it says it's out of that two is a number if I now say count it says one two I'm going to expand this window by typing escape W it's a bit tedious to add one number at a time so I'll add a few more um, I've got up to two three four five and six are numbers it says I have added three four five six as new number words it didn't use and as a number word what would you like me to do next if I now type count it will give me the numbers from one to six now there are various other things I can ask it to do I can say count from two and then it says two three four five six or I can say count to four one two three four I can say count from two to four it says two three four what happens if I do it backwards count from say from five to two five four three two it counts backwards so what's going on is that every time I type something in there's a collection of rules and those rules have patterns which they look for in the input and if the pattern that was typed in matches one of the rules then that rule will be able to handle what was in the input so I will briefly give a sample of that I'll look at the rule that handles count from there are actually several different rules so um, I'll search in the editor for count from and um, <coughs> some of the rules handle things that it can't answer and this one called rule unknown handles various things that it can't deal with but if I jump further ahead and I can see here um, this is the one I want this rule count from if the current interaction has not been answered and the sentence was count from a certain number then it looks to see what it knows about number words which it calls num words and if it finds that somewhere in the num words there's a collection of things that can be ignored and then that name if I said count from two num name would be two so it looks for two and then it collects all the rest and then it says two and all the rest it's so simple uh, because it just depends on matching patterns um, if we have um, uh, a sentence like count from something to something and um, in the list of number words we the or thing here says we can have sentences in different formats um, anyway if I've given it the format from two to six then if it finds that the six comes first and then the two it collects the numbers in between which are the rest and it reverses that using the pop 11 rev instruction so we reverse the rest get the rest and then what it'll say is name one which was six and then all the others in reverse five four three and then name two which was two so that was how we got the numbers printed out in reverse there are lots of other rules handling different cases and I'm not going to show all of them but I'll continue to demonstrate some of what they can do by going back to that other uh, window so we can also ask questions like does 2 precede 4 yes 4 is bigger than 2 does 5 Precede four. No, five is bigger. Um, does one come before four? Yes, four is bigger than one. What precedes four? Sorry, I did not understand. I must have um, forgotten the format. But let's try. Uh, what's before 4 
and it says 3 comes before 4 and what's after 2? 3 comes after 2. Now in all these cases it's using the information in its database. At this stage I can type a command that starts with a dot to say I'm no longer interacting with the program using its user interface instead I'm using a programmer interface and I can ask it to print out what's in the current database by typing dot data. It says the database contains this thing namely the word numwords as a keyword associated with the numbers I've told it about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and that the program has started and has answered something and it's now waiting for me to type something in again. So when it answered all those questions it was just using the information in this list to decide what came before what and how to say things out in reverse order. There was no other information in there. So that was the factual information in the system and then the rest of the information is procedural about how to use the facts to deal with various problems or answer various questions. This is still very simple and I'm not claiming that the way this works is how a child's mind works when the child learns to do these things. I'm just saying that we can use this sort of mechanism to express some in a, simpl in a simplified form some of the competences that a child who's learning to count will have to uh, acquire. And when we've been very clear about those competences which um, is facilitated by trying to model them in this sort of way we can then start asking how could brains support that sort of activity and that's a very hard question I'm not going to say anything about that in this tutorial but we can do more than what I've shown you so far we can ask the program to actually count some items so I could say um, count these items apple orange banana grape pear and now it g it makes a list of those names and it goes through the names one at a time but as it's going through them it goes through the numbers from one onward so we have one apple two orange three banana four grape five pear and so it's telling me that there are five items in there um, if I ask uh, count the numbers from 2 to 5 what should that do? Well a child can use numbers to count numbers so why not the program? Well it makes a list of the numbers from 2 to 5 which are 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then it does the counting in the same way as it did there. It says counts 1, 2, 3, 4 and as it does that it uh, produces the items in the list of things to be counted which in this case are numbers and ends up saying there are four numbers from 2 to 5 inclusive. What would you like me to do next? Well I think that's enough to illustrate some of the kinds of things the program can do and I'll show a little more of the code in particular I'll show the, so the code that did the counting from in this example. So I'll search for using the SS command count the numbers from oh and here we had uh, the rule I'd forgotten it was already visible the rule is called count numbers from and a rule in the system is something that has a collection of conditions and then a separator which is this arrow made of equals equals greater than and then a collection of actions and sometimes the conditions are very simple and sometimes actions are very simple for instance down here in this next rule count numbers fail uh, where it's um, asked to count the numbers from something to something and the number words list doesn't include those two numbers with something in between then it'll say sorry I do not seem to have numbers from name one to name two and this means that when these three conditions are satisfied it hasn't already answered a question and the question is of this form but 
the information uh, required is not in the database, then there's just the action to say and the action to record that this uh, utterance has been answered. That'll stop something else producing a spurious answer because it will test whether the thing has been answered. Um, but over here, in the count numbers from um, rule, where the uh, sentence that was typed in was count the numbers from, and then a, na a number word like count the numbers from two, count the numbers from three, or whatever. Then when it gets the part of the number list that starts with that name one and makes a list of all the rest, it then collects all the numbers into this variable, num words. The queries mean, double single query means get one thing that matches. Double query means get any arbitrary number of things from the database that match. So here I'll get all the number words. And here I'll just get only the number words that come after that whatever the name was. If I've said count the numbers from three. So then they will have four, five, six or whatever. So what does it do? Well, the first thing it does is remove that request from the database. So nothing else will attempt to interpret it. It then moves into running a little bit of POP11 program. So this system allows the rule-based mechanisms to interact with ordinary programming. And here we have some variables. We get a list of items, which is created from that name and the rest. So if the name was 3 and the rest were 4, 5, 6, this would make a list of 3, 4, 5, 6. Two other variables which are going to iterate over lists, name and num, and then two more, last name and last num, and these will be set up at the end of a counting operation. So we now have a loop which starts here, 4, and it ends here with n4, and some stuff is going to be done between the do and the n4. It's going to print out a number and a name, and each time it will record the last number used. But the loop is going to do something you may not have encountered before, namely it'll have two variables, name and number, which will go through two lists, a list of items, items came from the name and onwards, and the list of all the numbers. It's going to use this one to be the items counted, and this one to be the words used for counting. So it goes through getting num from that list and name from that list and makes a little list of them here. The, the little hat there means use the value of. So it uses the value of num, use the value of num, to make a two element list which it prints out and then it remembers what the last number was. And when it runs out of items, for instance there are no more items, it might have some more number words but it'll stop. Or if it ran out of number words, um, it will stop too. And here it'll remember the last number that was counted. And it can say there are, and it'll use that. So if this, the last number was um, three, it'll say there are three numbers from that name onwards. And then record that the thing is answered. So I hope that makes sense. Um, this is a, an unfamiliar way of programming to most people. But the use of the pattern matcher that enables you to find things by using these double equal signs which means I don't care what's in there and then a single query which says I'm looking for something that will uh, come uh, which has the value that I've got from the sentence and then I don't care what the rest is I just want to make a list of it things like that enable knowledge based programming to become much more economical much easier to understand much easier to debug than most of the kinds of programming languages that are used for other purposes. So let's just do a final test and see what happens if we give this thing um, a pro problem that it can't handle. So I'm going to do escape x to go back to the interaction window, escape w to expand it, and I will say count these items. And it doesn't have to be given um, whole words, I can just give it letters like A, B, C, X, Y, and then it counts them. 
one, two, three, four, five. But what happens if I give it more items than it knows numbers about, uh, knows number words? So I'll give it uh, count these items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. What will happen? So it does 1, A, 2, B, 3, C, 4, D, 5, E, 6, F, stops, and then says, I don't know enough number words to continue. So it's able to detect that it has run out. And if you want to see the, the rule that uh, um, produced that output, I can go back to the thing, uh, the program file over here, and I can search for I don't know enough. So I'll go up to the command line. It says I don't know. I think I shouldn't have the apostrophe there. Uh, I don't need number. I don't know. Okay, there it is. So here it was trying to count some items. I could have asked how many instead of saying count. And it would get the num words, and it'll go through the items and the num words, cycling down them, printing out them, and then if when it gets to the end, it hasn't finished the item, so the r the length of the list remaining is greater than naught, then it says I don't know enough number words to continue, which is how we got that response printed out. Well, there's quite a lot more. Uh, and the teach file, which will be available on the internet, um, has a number of exercises, including um, the exercise of trying to uh, get the system to go beyond the number 9, so that it can have the words like 10, 11, 12, up to 19, and then to switch mode so that it can have 20, 30, 40, 50, and f after 20, it can use two word numbers to count, like 21, 22, 23 and so on and they'll start again with 30, 31, 32, 33. Expressing all of that in a rule-based language is possible uh, but it would be a good programming exercise to take this package and extend it. There are many other things that could be done like extending it so that um, operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division could be added. And someone doing that might begin to get a deeper understanding into the problems of what a young child has to learn when going to school and being taught this aspect of mathematics. And I suspect if teachers have written programs to do some of the things they expect young children to do, they might have a deeper insight into what is going on when the child develops those competences and understand more of the ways in which things can be partly understood and partly misunderstood so that wrong answers come out and in that case dealing with the child is like debugging a program which may not be a familiar notion to many teachers anyway I can now say to this program bye to indicate that I've ended and it says I think this lesson was worth one pound thank you well I hope you think it was worth something